Hi everyone, this is Sky here to talk to you a little bit about the month of April 2020. I've been getting so many downloads and so many um, intuitive uh, peeks into the energy that is coming in, and it is very interesting. I know that we are all in life-changing, game-changing times. Um, so many uh, things have changed so suddenly, and we are really living our life in a bit of a different way as we're moving into April, and I have a lot to talk about with it. Thank you guys so much for jumping back to my channel here. If you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the thumbs up as well if you enjoy the video. So, um, April. This is not something that's really meant to be that hard or difficult, okay? I know that we're all kind of in a precarious position, maybe having some um, financial concerns, uh, perhaps not adjusting easily to more solitude, or basically um, almost learning a new type of uh, social culture, I feel like, as April 2020 deals a lot with social culture. It deals a lot with... Um, with allowing oneself to enjoy something that was unexpected, allowing oneself to be calm and tranquil in the face of adversity, and allowing oneself to pioneer a new path in perhaps a bit of an unexpected way. What we do have for the entire month of April 2020 is Saturn in its incredible sign of Aquarius. Saturn is the traditional ruler of Aquarius. I made an entire video about it um, on the subject of Saturn and Aquarius. I will link that below as well as in the top right-hand corner right now. And um, I definitely urge you to go and check out that video because it's uh, one of my favorite videos I've ever done. And I think that it really is helpful for this period of time. But um, basically what it means is we are all in brand new territory, okay? We not only are in the brand new territory of Saturn and Aquarius, we are also in the um, hyper new energy of double one. We have Aries season alongside the energy of rat year in the Chinese system. Both of these signs are representative of the number one, so we have two strong one energies coming in, meaning that on both sides of the crossroads, on both sides of what we're experiencing, there is something that has not been faced before or something that has not been seen before. So first and foremost, coming into the month of April, we have to really watch out for getting super attached to a plan or super attached to a... Um, to a momentum or a goal that we've been working on for a long time and that we expected to go a certain way or a certain uh, goal that we planned or anticipated to meet at this time with a lot of, um, you know, foresight. There's not a whole lot of foresight right now. And this is actually one of the biggest blessings in disguise. Um, there are so many people in the month of April, I feel, to be uh, wondering upon what they're truly meant for, to sort of unexpectedly um, be walking into a uh, hobby or a new creative project or a new territory just in general that is so right for them that they otherwise would not have stumbled upon. There is definitely a sense of um, really running forward into something, um, pursuing something brand new, and kind of stumbling upon what you're meant for or stumbling upon something that is very right for you, okay? And it's really important because um, I think that what we could have seen without some of these health crises, without some of these health crises that came in um, is kind of a boring continuance, okay? And it's not really what we needed right now. Sometimes something so mm, opposite to what we expected or so opposite to what we think could be a good thing does come in from the universe just to kind of detour us or send us into a new linear path that um, is actually right. So first and foremost, what I want you to do moving toward April and into April is really try to get out of any type of like disappointment or any type of old, stale paths that truly are not meaning much for you anymore. And if you are spending a lot more time at home, um, perhaps having a quarantine, or perhaps, um, you know, kind of on some kind of lockdown, or uh, stuck in, inside yourself, or, or inside your house, um, even perhaps not having as much money as you're accustomed to, um, I want you to kind of start to detach from those things just a little bit. Um, because as I said in the Saturn and Aquarius video, our value systems are going to start changing really quickly. And, um, you know, I've predicted a lot about uh, coronavirus and what it entails, and I have a video on it. Um, but it's very possible, again, I won't put things in stone, but it's possible that it will remit uh, when Saturn goes retrograde again, which is uh, mid-May 
2020. Um, so Saturn will go retrograde back into Capricorn and normalcy might kind of continue. And during that time, we will kind of be tested by the universe um, on whether we learned the lesson here. And depending on how that testing goes, once Saturn goes back into Aquarius, we will see whether or not coronavirus will re-emerge or not. Um, so I really want to point out that what happens here, what you choose to pursue here, how you feel about your own life and your own experience. And I want to say the um, what you feel to be a hindrance or a... Or, or, or a rude type of action from the universe, those types of things will really determine how we move forward after um, the summer of this year. So there is a connecting point between this Aries season and then like Leo to Virgo season as well. So from April to around August, April energy, something will kind of fall off May, June, July, and there might be more normalcy, but then August and September, especially actually September, comes in and we're going to connect back to April. So whatever that means for some of you, that's something to take into consideration. Something that also feels really important in April as we are going from Aries to Taurus season is uh, creating things for ourselves or making things for ourselves. And this is also interesting with the social distancing that's going on. Um, it's like the action of making your own food for yourself or the action of um, making your own day routine for yourself if you're not at work or if you're um, having a change in work routine. There's something really important to see in that, as I feel that many of us might be struggling with that or struggling with the priorities of what we're putting into our body, maybe how we are moving through our day, how we are um, uh, pioneering a path in our life, uh, because what we eat, how we move through the day, the hours that we choose to do certain things, all of these things are very determinate in the energy that we have to expend. So Aries season is about expended energy and pushing forward. And then it moves to Taurus season, which then becomes about resting and allowing to yourself to receive. It's kind of like you give in Aries season and you receive in Taurus season. So, um, yeah, a lot of us maybe have a hard work to do in the beginning of April, maybe relating to diet or relating to working for ourselves, working for our bodies, um, maybe cleansing the body, detoxing the body, getting rid of parasites, getting rid of um, some type of like um, illness, you know, bacteria, virus, things like that. Maybe some of us are feeling ill during Aries season. I mean, obviously with the pandemic, there will be uh, quite a few people. Um, but by Taurus season, we should really start to see a better health. And this will come as a result of cooking for ourselves too. I feel there's something really strong about cooking for ourselves because I know for me personally, um, it's not something I'm wonderful at. You know, I wouldn't consider myself a great chef. Uh, so it's been an interesting experience to uh, really have started um, having to uh, become a chef. So I, I feel that for a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of people who are in a similar place. And, and those of you who are good cooks, or those of you who, you know, maybe even before this crisis started happening, were already preparing your own meals for yourself. I mean, you're five steps ahead. You're, um, it's going to be easier, you know, um, it's going to be a lot easier to heal during this time. Another very simple and direct message that I get about this month is um, there has to be something new that comes in, okay? Um, if you were to look back to like March of 2020, and then we get to May 2020, like once we get to May and you look back at April, you really want to look back from May and see, okay, yes, I started something new, or I uh, made even perhaps a tough choice, or I was getting myself out of bed and I was pursuing that, or you know I took on that creative project I'd been wanting to do forever, or I took on that exercise routine or that detox, or I faced my insomnia. It's like there has to be some type of hindsight from May 2020, once we get there, that yeah, I did that. Okay, I took that on. It wasn't just a washout. Because here's the thing about this time of social distancing and this time of um, of pulling back, you don't want it to just be a fade in the basket or, or a, 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 I can't remember the term, but it's like you don't just want it to be washed out. You know, Pisces season, that was fine. If you're getting this reading early or if you're listening to it at the end of March, it might still kind of feel like a bit of a blur. And that's okay at that time because Pisces season is about, yeah, just washing things out, sleeping, letting it go. But as we move firmly into Aries season... We kind of want our conscious mind to start waking up and be very um, realizing 
of what it is that we're doing every single day. So our memory should actually start to get a little bit better. Short-term memory should start to get a little bit better. Our attention should start to get more concise. So attention deficit disorder, uh, not being able to focus on anything, cognitive fogginess, those types of things should start to dissipate as we move, especially into like the very beginning of April. So you might want to really support your body in this process of um, getting a bit sharper and getting a bit more precise because between now and Gemini time, again now and uh, later May, there's going to be a nice, um, uh, what I feel to be a really nice progression that deals with uh, the mind sharpening up and um, not being so tired, not having so much uh, mental, emotional, neurological fatigue, uh, which is probably going to be really offset and going to be made possible by the uh, creative projects that we take on, the detoxes that we do, the uh, healthier eating that we do, um, not consuming so many other people's essence and energy through eating food made by hundreds of other people in one month, for example. All of these things are going to kind of work together to uh, make us healthier, okay? And that's what it comes down to, you guys, with uh, the health crisis that we're currently facing. Any type of mass disease, illness, unwellness is a linchpin to create more health. So again, by um, being away from public, you know, you're not being exposed to as many people's energy. You work on your own energy. By cooking your own food you are only working with your own essence and therefore there's less things to filter the kidneys okay the kidneys the endocrine system but especially the kidneys and liver can get much healthier during this time because we have way less things to filter through which is why it's such an essential time to um meet that halfway and you know yeah not be just eating ramen noodles all day okay not just be drinking coffee all day or mountain dew all day or energy drinks all day but to meet it halfway, maybe just lemon water, okay? Maybe that would be an interesting thing for us only to drink. <laughs> um, or just water, you know? Um, there is something about the liquids, okay? You want to watch out for the liquids that you're putting into your body. We come out of Pisces season into Aries season. We're in a very fiery energy. The liquids or the waters or the... Um, sources of hydration need to be thought about. That's just a random message because I do feel that some of them are quite contaminated. Um, and maybe not even with... Um, uh, re relating to like dirty water, but I feel that the chemicals that are in a lot of the drinks that we drink are uh, doing uh, not good things to us. So water is a, is a good uh, thing to maybe stick to. The last intuitive message that I'm going to touch on is uh, regarding energy levels and the hard work that we might have to actually put in during April. Um, so it feels to me that it's really important to use the energy that we're given in April in some way. Um, I do feel that it's easy for people to kind of collapse on themselves or implode on themselves if they're not allowing themselves to use the energy, you know, use the energy, you get more energy. There's something about the more you put out, the more that you get in. Um, luckily, it's uh, less likely to be burned out during this time, but not impossible for those people who are you know, still working really hard or still maybe trying to meet some kind of deadline, you might want to make it funner, okay? Um, or you might want to make it more fun. You might want to make your work output um, creative or more um, different than it's been before. Maybe you have some kind of reward system or you allow yourself to kind of um, make it more creative in some way, but through that you end up doing more or you end up outputting more. One of the reasons that this um, is actually a very chaotic time for social distancing, if it, especially if it really lasts uh, throughout mid-April and towards late April, um, it's chaotic because a lot of energy does need to be spent, and I don't feel that it's good for us to be laying in bed all day, unless we're like sick or something. Um, so if you're staying at home or if you're social distancing, you still need to be active during Aries season. It's never a good time of year to be too stagnant or to be too... Um, relax oriented. So uh, maybe it's a great time to run on the treadmill, you know, or a great time to start that new yoga routine or a great time to um, even do something like uh, insanity or some type of like major core building exercise. I feel like that could be so great to build your core strength over the time of Aries season and relax into it during Taurus season. It'll kind of also help you to then clear your mind. And it's like your core strength makes your mind's strength even more. So, okay, so the core, the strength of the core and also a uh, neurological, uh, neurological electrical activity is very connected. I never knew this. This is a channeled insight. 
So if there's a super weak core, there's going to be a lot of like attention deficit disorder and perhaps a lot of depression and a lot of um, sadness as well. So Aries season is really going to strengthen our core up. And, and maybe that's also because we're facing a lot of our fears too. So it's not just about like physical ab workouts or something. It's also about like our stomachs and what they're like, what we're made of, you know, maybe thinking, okay, I was always so afraid to be stuck at home, or I was always so terrified to not be able to eat out every day or to not be able to, you know, leave the house. And it's like, now I'm just staying home and I'm not terrified of that anymore and I, I've faced these fears and that like strengthens your core energy if you know what I mean. So it's really neat to see a lot of people um, truly reaching a level of strength and a level of um, fearlessness that has not been seen in a long long time. Uh, this is awesome um, but it is a battle for some you know some of us are going to have to kind of um, have a progression with that like there could be uh, nightmares or there could be um, bad dreams or a type of agoraphobia or something that does come up for some people who are super, super extroverted and super connected to being outside of the home, you know, very 10th house people or 9th house people, um, 5th house people. It can be tough, you know, to not ever uh, be leaving too much or to not be leaving more than necessary. And um, But of course, there are a certain type of people who are also really good in this situation. But if you're struggling with uh, distancing, okay, um, try to see it as an opportunity. Try to see it as a time to look at you and to develop yourself more. Because one of the most uh, chaotic things over the last few years has been um, the the theme, or the, the I'll call it the concept, of the undeveloped person taking on the world, or the undeveloped person, um, you know, stepping into uh, the fool archetype. All right, um, and you know, what does undeveloped mean? It can mean different things for different people. But the way that I see it is uh, the person who is afraid to be with themselves, the person who is afraid to face their home, or the person who is afraid to um, admit that the current journey or the current uh, progression is not right, nor will it ever be right, yet we're going to really um, you know, put on the full face of makeup or dress up really nice and go out and face the world and not look at that, okay? Um, so here's a time to look at that. And it's harsh to see these truths sometimes. Like, there's going to be a lot of awakenings. Um, there's going to be a lot of like, oh my god, why am I still here? I totally didn't realize that this job that I'm in or this relationship that I'm in or this this uh, whatever it is was totally not right. And the only thing that made it plausible or doable was the fact that I was distracting myself with and, you know, tricking myself with everything outside of the house. And um, there's going to be a lot of that. And that can drive some people crazy. It can cause nervous breakdowns. It can cause a lot of, like, stir craziness. So, um, but if you're watching this video, I would imagine that you totally have the capability to keep that... Um, in check. And if you're there, you know, if you are seeing that you're not happy with where you've ended up, try to not be frustrated at yourself. Now it is what it is. You know, now it is here. There's no reason to cry over spilled milk. Um, and that's one of the best attitudes to take to, into Aries season is um, no need to cry over spilled milk, you know. Um, face it, deal with it. Um, because what you'll also see is part of the undeveloped concept that we're talking about also comes from not accepting it at the same time. So not so on one hand, being in a place that you know isn't right, but not accepting that yet staying yet facing the outside world is it's chaotic, you know. So all you can really do now here is accept where you are and start to plan and start to strategize for once normalcy does resume um, to how you might like to um, finally find yourself in a place that you don't have to avoid so that the universe doesn't really step in and be like, okay, we're not going to avoid anything just so you can see it. Um, it's a really, really nice to kind of look at the universe or to uh, conceptualize the universe or God or source or whatever it is and really just hold that space and think, okay, now I see. Like, wow, I totally see, I, I've woken up, you know? That's sort of the primordial equinox energy is, um, wow, now I've woken up. You know, Aries season, wake-up call. We are awake. It's kind of like right at the end of Pisces season, we get this cold splash of water, and it's like that, <gasps> that gasp in, and we're awake, and we see it so clearly. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. For, there are some <laughs> scary things that some people are waking up to, I will say that. Um, but also then some people, um, and and um, it's actually not too hard to get here if you just let yourself, some people are kind of like, I can work with this. It might not be optimum, but I can work with this, you know? So try to let yourself find the potential. And anyway, I'm going to conclude the intuitive messages there, and let's get into the um, pick a card tarot spread. So um, I have three cards here going left to right, card number one, card number two, and card number three. Take a moment to meditate on what you're seeing and um, choose a card that you feel drawn to. 
Okay, so if you chose card number one, you got Knight of Cups reversed. This is an important archetype coming up right now. I'm proud that it has. Um, it's not the time to be secretive or the time to hide yourself or the time to cover things up right now, okay? Um, despite, you know, being very Knight of Cups as a collective right now, you know, we are more inside ourselves. We are more, you know, in the house away from, you know, public experiences. Um, it's actually reversed, okay? So what it means is that this is not meant to be an escape. This is not meant to be like um, too hidden of an experience. Um, so it might be really good to uh, call people on the phone, or it might be really good to talk to people and tell them how you're doing, even if you're really struggling, or even if there's something that you might feel to be a bit ugly in what you're going through or chaotic. Um, it might be really good to open up about it or really talk about um, your experience and share it, because I feel like we have a lot to learn from each other when it comes to dealing and coping with what we're going through right now. I also feel that this is a really, really important time to... Um, not keep secrets or to not uh, trick other people or to not fool other people. Um, I feel also that people are very weighed down by secrets or weighed down by um, hidden uh, past experiences. Um, so there can be a lot of guilt during this time. Um, and I'm not saying that if you chose this card that you're going to feel like you want to keep secrets or you're going to feel guilty, but I feel that you might be um, surrounded by these types of people or you might be seeing really clearly right now that, um, okay, that might have been another thing that I was avoiding was, um, you know, just being honest about what I want. Was I being honest with myself? Was I being honest with um, my true energy and what I'm kind of meant for? Because Knight of Cups also deals with, um, with not feeling that we can openly pursue what is truly right for us. So maybe even keeping our aspiration a secret, okay? Um, maybe not really being open that, yeah, I want to do this or I want to do that. Now's a great time to open up about it and announce to the universe or announce to the people around you, the people who are close to you, I am meant for this and this is what I want to do and this is where I see myself. It feels very supported to uh, really be open to everybody about where you want to be in life, okay? No, no longer do we want to keep secrets about this or share it only with ourselves. Okay, if you picked card number two, you got six of wands. Um, so yeah, this is actually a confidence-boosting time. Um, again, as I was talking about in the intuitive messages, it's such a great time to get your health in order and to start feeling confident within your body. Um, so doing the core exercise, doing the detox, eating the healthy food, preparing your own food, this is almost uh, like no other possibility to um, really get you more strong and get you more confident. Um, I feel that this time of social distancing will actually do really well for a lot of people's health. Um, and I also feel that you want to, um, aside from just your appearance or aside from just how you come off to people, um, it's going to be important to not think of this as uh, something that is a punishment or something that is unfair, okay? Something about this experience for you is going to be uh, really... I don't know, it's just going to be really uh, empowering and really uh, emboldening, okay? Um, you will gain a lot of power and a lot of personal capability through this time and through this month. Um, so I, I just feel intuitively that if, you're, if you've chosen this card, there's kind of like, um, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to do what I planned. I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, be with those people or live up to those expectations, perhaps. Um, but it's it's like actually on the contrary, you kind of fly way over the top of those through this experience. And it's going to be really important to step into that and to um, expect that of yourself and to also know that that's almost the only possibility. Um, so really try to tell yourself, okay, I'm going to rise above this situation and I'm going to develop the parts of myself that need to uh, get stronger here. All right. Um, card number three, you got six of swords. Okay. Um, I love Six of Swords. It's one of my home cards, um, and obviously this time marks a substantial transition for you if you've chosen this card. Um, I'm not going to lie. This is not going to be the easiest month, but it's also going to get you somewhere that you've wanted to be for a long time, okay? This might be the last leg of the journey. This might be, um, 
it might be tough. There might be hard work to do. Again, maybe um, you've been quite dependent on the public, perhaps, or dependent on other people cooking food for you, or um, dependent on a career that is no longer um, uh, really giving to you. And here is the time where you do most of your emotional work as a person, is just during this time of... Um, of also getting to know somebody else in a way that you never did. So this is an interesting thing about Six of Swords. Maybe an unexpected detour comes up, or we see ourselves living somewhere or experiencing a situation that we never thought we would experience. And it's almost about the person that's closest to us during that time. Um, so maybe we've just moved in with um, a new relationship. Maybe we've moved back in with family, or maybe we've taken on a new, a new roommate or something like that. And this new person or these uh, uh, relatively new people that we might not be used to be living with, um, they're teaching us so much right now, okay? Six of Swords deals a lot with um, living with others and what you stand to learn from that time and what emotional lessons you have to learn from from this person and i will say that this period of time with six of swords if you've chosen card number three is going to be one of the most defining times of your life most likely um, it's a very very defining energy so the choices that you're making here are important and i would definitely urge you to um Think twice before reacting or before getting super emotional about things. With Six of Swords, you really want to um, not lose control of your emotions and not um, also sign yourself up for inevitable situations that are going to end in sadness as well. Um, and you also want to... Um, Maybe take a sigh of relief with Six of Swords as well, because it, it can also indicate a time where you are getting to the shore. You know, you're sailing and you get to the shore and it's like such a sigh of relief. Um, so I feel also that if you've chosen this card that you are um, in a better place now, okay? I feel that you need to really look at that. And I think that you need to look at where you are coming from. And um, if things are starting to get difficult here and now, it might be really important to not... Um, make this the worst thing that's ever happened to you because it's almost like to go back to where you were would be a lot worse but sometimes that can be hard to really see once we're out of it so like the grass is greener on the other side you know it's like oh i kind of wish i was just back in that old relationship or that old situation but in reality where you are now is so much better but everybody's having a tough time so we can kind of trick ourselves and be like oh, this is the worst thing I've ever gone through, or this is the worst relationship I've ever been in, or something like that, when in reality, it's like you are where you need to be, and you don't want to make the same mistakes twice. That's something else with Six of Swords. You want to really be able to recognize how much better things are now, or how much better things stand to be, and not trick yourself and fool yourself and backtrack, because it's like there's a big slap sometimes from the universe if we backtrack with Six of Swords. This is a forward moving, we're going to the shore, this is a transition. It's almost not good to um, block it or to want to go back or to want to change something. So try to go with the momentum that you currently have. And uh, there are rewards for that too. And you will truly see that, um, wow, I'm in such a, I'm, a, I'm just really a lot better than I was before. Um, so that's beautiful to have for the month of April. All right, everyone, and that's going to conclude the pick a card session. Um, you know, this is Aries season, and I want you to be optimistic. Um, there is such a thing as dangerous optimism right now, but we do all need to have hope, and we do all need to have um, resilience as well. This is a great time to see how resilient and enduring you can be, and um, to also make really uh, good decisions. You know, definitely don't be around sick people if you can avoid it. Don't fool yourself into thinking, okay, yeah, I'll just go to the party or I'll just go to the, the social get-together just because I'm like star crazy from being inside. Um, we do have a responsibility to face ourselves and to see what we truly want to um, activate into our lives right now. And that doesn't need to be distracted by other people. And that's one of the reasons why we're having this health thing. So Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Um, the uh, April general readings per Zodiac sign are up on Patreon right now. Um, so be sure to go over and check them out. Uh, I was thinking about making them just exclusive to Patreon this month, but due to the health crisis and financial worries, they will be going up on YouTube. However, um, it's 
uh, it would be so appreciated if you are still abundant or if you are, or if maybe if things haven't changed for you, if you could support this channel on Patreon because they are kind of meant to be exclusive, but it's just kind of like, uh, I felt the need to make them public just because of the issues that are going on. Um, but yeah, there will be, um, some type of extended readings over on Patreon, um, and also weekly tea chats that are exclusive to Patreon if you would like to get more, uh, content from me, um, and support this process. So that will be the first link in the description box below, and I'll put it in the comments too. So, uh, thank you guys so much. I will be talking to you soon. I'm wishing you so much love, light, prosperity, and capability during this incredible double one energy of April 2020. It's one of the newest energies that we have felt in a long time time. Good luck. I'll be talking to you guys later. Much love. Bye.